hey this is a multi-part series and i have linked part number one in the video description down below oh and if you want to follow along you go to procurementzen.com slash digital where you can download the resources chat with fellow students and by the way it's completely free so let's start with video all right there is maybe one disadvantage to nine being that easy as soon as you start finding your way in nine you start adding lots and lots of nodes this can quickly make your workflow a mess. But Nime has a very nice way to avoid this and I'm going to show you two solutions to this problem in the next two lessons, so this one and the next one. In this video, we focus on what is called workflow annotations. These are basically simple visual elements with the only purpose to provide structure. If we have a look at the workflow we have been working on so far, you still can read it. But let's give it a little bit more structure by adding a workflow annotation. Right click on the canvas and select new workflow annotation. This yellow box appears. Don't be confused if your workflow seems to be blurred all of a sudden, we change that in a second. If you hover over the corners or borders of this workflow annotation, you see that your mouse pointer changes. When it changes to this little cross with the arrow tops, then this means you can move the workflow annotation around as you can see here. Let's move it here with some space at the top do you see these little dots here in the workflow annotations? This can be used to change the size of the workflow annotation. So let's just do this and make it a little bit bigger like this and just leave some space at the top. If we click outside the workflow annotation, the blur is done. That's basically a visual indicator that shows that we're currently working on that workflow annotation. If you hover your mouse at the top left corner, you see this little pen appear. This means if we click it, we can add some text. Let's just do it and click the pen. You see, all of a sudden we can write some text here, double click into it and let's call this workflow annotation input notes. Let's call it that way so that if we don't touch this workflow in the next two weeks and then open it up again, that we clearly remember where we have to put our base spreadsheet files. We can also format the text and give the border a different look. Let's just do this. Make the font a little bit bigger, maybe something like 13, make it bold. And we don't want a yellow, but a green border. And we don't want it that thick. Let's put it to six instead of 10. Now we click outside of the workflow annotation that ends the edit mode and boom, this is how we can create some more structure into our workflows. One other thing that happens quite often is that our workflows tend to grow bigger and bigger from left to right. I personally do not like that and there is a neat little trick how we can avoid this. Let us just open another workflow annotation again. Right click, new workflow annotation. We don't give it any text, we leave the color as it is. The one thing we do is we resize it and make it a little bit smaller, make it a small rectangle like this. And now we hover over the corners or over the borders until we have this crossbar. And then we just drag it out of the window to the bottom right. Just have a look at the outliner before we do that, let me just quickly show you. Have a look at the outliner here. What happens if we do that when we release the mouse button? So drag and drop to the bottom right corner. You see all of a sudden we have much more space in our, work, in our workflow and can move it down. Let's do this one more time. You can do this multiple times and we have even more space. And let's do it just one final time. All right, we can now move back through the outliner to the top. We click here, which ends the edit mode and boom, we have quite a lot of space to place additional nodes, to place additional parts of our workflow underneath it. Pretty cool, huh? By the way, you can download the finished 
workflow for this lesson in the resources section underneath this lesson. In the next video, I'm going to show you my number one trick for improved readability and understandability in workflows in the next lesson. See you there. If you want to go to the first part of this online course, click this video. And here is just another video that shows you some very funny stuff you can do with NIME. Oh, and if you want to download the resources and chat with fellow students, just go here to this page over at procurementzen.com.